This month I'm down south in the hotbed of UK carping, where my quest is to catch a 30 pounder from the legendary village of Yately. Like a lot of anglers my age, I grew up reading about the stories of giant Yately carp, but other than a couple of short trips to fish the match and south lakes for mag features some 20 odd years ago, I've never had the chance to fish with any consistency one of the many pits in the region. That all changed this year when I decided to join Little Molsham, a simply stunning 10 acre pit run by longtime carper Alan Cooper, containing a healthy stock of carp to 40 pounds as well as grass carp to over 50. It's the perfect venue to target a carp I've wanted in my album and since I was a young lad making my first steps into the carping world. Well, it's finally stopped raining and uh, we've had loads of it over the last few days. It's the middle of July now and there's been a lot of overcast conditions in this area. A bit of rain, then it gets sunny again for an hour or two, then it gets rainy again, but it's perfect carp catching conditions. And the fish have just spawned only quite recently, so I knew they were going to be up for a feed and there's been one or two of them getting caught as well. But this is the swim I'm in. It's called the, what's it called? This is the left hand party swim. And there it is behind me, there's the swim. You can just see the, the rods out there. And everything's lovely and green. It's such a mature lake, this place. Beautiful venue. And as you can see out there, there you go, it's a lovely day today. We've got a sports field over to the left there, which is why you can hear kids playing football. But um, yeah, it's a decent swim, not just because of the um, the features you've got in front of you because there's loads of ups and downs, there's loads of plateaus, bars, weed, etc. and stuff like that. But it's also a decent swim because you've got this little cabin behind you, which is pretty good. There's a set of sofa, all sorts of bits and pieces in there. Just have a quick look and show you. Not that I'm using them. If I can just get that out of the way. There you go. It's a bit of a mess at the moment because that's carp anglers for you, but Barbecues, fire, settees, chairs, even a little motion calendar up there with some big fish on it. So, yeah, decent little place if it's cold and wintry. And I think, from what I've heard, it does get a bit of pressure this swim does during the winter months. Alan caught the big enough here last year at 40 pounds and ounces. And he also caught uh, a decent fish called the lead cool in as well out of there. So, it's a popular swim, but it's been getting fished in the summer months as well. So, uh, you know, I haven't been doing regular visits down here. I've been doing trips here, there and everywhere. And most of the times I've been down here, these two swims, the right-hand party and the left-hand party, there's been people in here because there's some really big features out in front of these. And these are the ones that tend to do a lot of the decent fish. Now, the big one in here, it's not got a name. Um, oh, it has two-tone. I think it's two-tone, is it? Could be, I can't remember. But um, it tends to get caught from this side of the lake, and that's the reason why I've decided to come in here. So, um, you know, there's not just that one in here that I'd like to catch. I actually joined this venue to try and catch myself a Yaty 30. So, um, you know, I've caught 20s from a couple of other waters. I've only fished, th this is the third water I've ever fished in Yaty. I fished the South Lake just when it, it opened, and I fished the Match Lake, doing a feature on there when Barney used to run the Semex waters a few years back. So, um, you know, I've not really got a great deal of experience in this area, but Yately being Yately, it's definitely somewhere that I'd like to get a decent fish from. And where better to get one from than a venue like this, because it really is stunning. And only a few moments ago, I managed to catch my first fish from here. After a few goes, I've had a few trips down here, and um, it was a nice little mirror. I didn't get it on camera, unfortunately, because I was actually about to, to move swim. So. I just got my phone out and I got my cameras all buried in the bottom of the barra. So I just got my phone out, stuck it behind one of the little butt rests of the rods and um, just filmed it uh, with the phone, unfortunately. But I got some nice quality video of it whilst it was on the bank. So uh, let's have a quick look at it now. Cheers out. Now these fish have just spawned recently, so uh, I'm sure this one would have been about two or three pounds bigger than this a couple of weeks ago. But uh, if I'm honest, weight is not important for me today. Just to catch my first one from Molsham is lovely.
typical that the wind starts to blow, just I'm about to start doing some filming, but uh, what I'm going to do now is talk to you about the setup that I'm using today because the swim that I'm fishing is quite weedy and I know from some of the questions that I get on social media there's a lot of newcomers out there that aren't really that sure about how to fish in weed and indeed whether it's possible to actually catch carp from weedy swims, but let me assure you that it definitely is possible to catch carp from weed and if you think the swim that I'm fishing today is a bad one, well, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd only rank it at about five or six, so it's not too bad at all. But that's not to say that it won't cause me a few problems, because wherever there's weed, you do get the odd problem, so long as you're not on the top of your game. Now the swim itself, I've got a plateau at about 50 or 60 yards range, and on top of that plateau, it's up to about five foot in areas, and it's top to bottom in weed, stringy weed in some places, and quite thick in others, and it's mostly Canadian pond weed, but dotted about, there are some clear areas, and it's those clear areas that I'm fishing to. But with the weed dotted about, obviously I've got to be sure that what I'm using gear-wise is capable of getting me carp through that weed. So, what we've got is mono straight through. Now normally I'll be using 15 pound mono in most swims, but today I've beefed it up to 18 pounds just to be sure. And I'm using the camo outline from Avid. I've talked about this mono before in my vlogs. I've told you how tough it is, and for weed it's absolutely brutal stuff. It's the perfect kind of mono to use in heavy weed and wherever I go around the world whether I'm fishing in England or overseas it's this stuff that I turn to it's absolutely super it's only been out about a year or so and already it's really selling well so that's a great indicator that it's a good line and take it from me if you want any more confidence it really is a quality piece of kit some of you are probably wondering why I'm not using a leader and the reason for that is down to the lake rules because this lake doesn't allow them and I actually think that's a great rule to have in place on any lake where there's weed because where there's a leader there's going to be a knot on the line and where there's a knot on the line there's going to be problems with picking up weed. It starts to gather around the knot, it causes you problems with playing the fish and it doesn't keep in a direct line with the fish and obviously the bigger that ball becomes it causes problems with getting the knot through the tip eye when you're playing those fish so uh, my advice is to scrap leads and just fish direct through to the lead as you can see i'm using a lead clip setup which is my personal preference for weed and the reason for that is that i can shed the lead quite easily i've just got the tail rubber very lightly clipped on there so when i do get a pick up the lead comes off nice and easy and it keeps me in direct control of the fish which believe me is the best and the most easiest way to play fishing weed. The other thing I'll do is make sure that the rod setup is nice and sturdy. I'm not using a pod, I'm using single bank sticks today. These are well stuck into the ground. I've got the butt eye on the rod behind the buzzer so it can't be pulled out of place. I'm using butt grips on the backrests and I'm not fishing off the bait runner because once the fish gathers any momentum on the take, it's going to go through the weed beds, round the weed beds, it's eventually going to get locked up and that's where we're going to get problems. So the clutch is set nice and tight and I'm just fishing for a couple of bleeps and I'm on the rod as fast as I possibly can be. I think I've got it through the worst. Right. That's a scaly. Nice. Very nice. Very nice, lovely, yes, brilliant. This is an awesome carp. Might not be a monster, but just look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. Lovely fully scaled mirror. Fantastic.
you won't believe how quiet this place is. It's obviously Yateley, which is one of the hotbeds of English carp fishing, and the car park lake's just round the corner, and so is the Match Lake. And I saw the Match Lake car park this morning, and there were so many cars in there, it was ridiculous. But this place, 10 acres. Last week I did a night on here, had the place to myself. At the moment, I think there's just three of us on 10 acres, so it's just beautiful. Just listen to it. It's almost silent, other than that little game of football that's going on over there. And this is the kind of fishing I really enjoy doing there. Quite syndicate lakes. It doesn't have to have monsters in it. You know, there's a 40 pounder in here and probably 15, 20, 30 pounders at the right time of the year, obviously. But, you know, they're not monsters compared to modern day carp fishing, but it's good fishing. And this is a lovely venue, sort of place that I really could get my teeth into. I've got a lot of the waters that I need to fish this year, lots of other things I need to do, but from a pure enjoyment side of things, this is just a stunning water, it really is. Lake Yateley as well, so there's a bit of kudos in it if you get one of them. lashing it down at the minute and this is Bo's first ever fishing experience. How are you finding it darling? Yeah, yeah pretty wet at the moment and a bit different for her as well. Not even got any rods out yet but uh, thankfully I managed to get myself set up with a bibby and uh, have a bite to eat. But yeah that was a good storm just. Looking steam coming off the lake at the minute. Fishing well, mega conditions as well, so three nights ahead of me. Hopefully, this little girl will bring some good luck. What are you doing? Licking your lips. I am, oh, I've got my hands full with you. What are you doing? Look what she's done. Oi! That was full of sausages. Yeah, no wonder you're looking, licking your lips. I had to go out in the boat to put my rods out and I mean, when we left home this morning, she'd had, I think it was about five sausages at home and then I gave her three and a dinner down there and I kept, I think it was five in that packet and I stupidly have left them just under the bed, wrapped up and come back and, well that's tomorrow's dinner gone. You cheeky little thing. What are you doing? I can't shout at that though, can I? Look at her, she's so beautiful. Yes, you, miss. Yes, look at you. Oh, God. You're going to be a nightmare on the bank. <laughs> hmm. What have you done? Hmm? What have you done? You're going to be farting all night now and a bit of you, aren't you? You know you are. Don't try and get on my lap. Oh, don't try and get underneath my arm as well. You know you've done wrong. You do. Oh dear. Sorry, Daddy. I'm sorry I've eaten all the sausages. I'm going to have to go down the shops now and get some more food. And you're going to fart all night as well. Yeah. That's what stuffies do. Proper farters. Mm. Yep. Let's see what happens tonight in the rods anyway. At least somebody's had a good evening. <laughs>
looks like a nice common. Uh, certainly upper 20 and possibly 30 if I'm mega lucky. I don't know, it looks close. But either way, I'm happy. Oh, you, oi, move out of the way. Chapa. What is it? Huh? What is it? Yeah, we know you want to eat it. Because I know what you like. Oh. Look at her. I'm going to have to tie her up when I do the pictures because she's, uh, she's getting all frisky about it. Oh, it's the first ever carp that I know of that uh, she's ever seen. So we've only had her a week. And. Um, <laughs> she's, I got her on the bank and as I started weighing it, she's sniffing it and trying to get as close as you possibly can to it, like you can see now, so I've got to be careful doing pictures. Well, I love these old Yankee carp because they've got loads of character and this is a typical one. It's very slate grey in colour, weathered fins, lots of characteristics and probably a lot of history as well. So, yeah, a very happy carp angler today. Lovely. Right, just about to go and bait up, so I thought I'd give you a bit of a chat about what I'm using because it's definitely worth talking about this because if you watch a lot of my videos then you'll know that I tend to use big baits a lot of the time 18 millers, 20 millers and indeed bigger than that if I'm fishing overseas and it is my stock way of fishing most waters that I go to if I'm targeting big fish then I try and do something a little bit different and most people around England always use these small baits so going in with big baits is obviously something different and it definitely does give me an edge from time to time but um, having fished a lot of different waters during my career, I do know that it's not a method that you can use on every single water and be successful with it. And indeed when I first came on here trying to catch some of the bigger fish, it was a method that I turned to straight away. But after nine nights I'd not had any bites, so uh, I obviously had to change things to try and turn things around. And since then I've turned to the smaller baits and it's those that's doing me the bites. You know, Now I'm on, I think it's 18 nights, 19 nights and I'm on six fish. So you can see a big difference between when I started on this water and how I'm fishing it at the moment. So what I've got in here is just a mix of everything. There's some small eight millers, there's some 10 millers, there's some 16 mil boys, there's some crush boys in there, some 18 millers, I've got some sweet corn, I've got some hemp, I've even got a few tigers in there. And all I've done is just mixed it all up and then leathered it with uh, some DNA Bates food liquid. So I've got all sorts of different boilers in here. There's the majority of them are SLK, which is my favorite bait, but I've actually got a few of the new bug in there as well as some S7 as well just mixed it all up so I do know from talking to the lads on this water that the fish in here like a bit of everything so uh, that's what I'm offering them and it's definitely working for me so the point I'm getting at here is that yeah have your go-to methods but be versatile enough to chop and change when you need to and I definitely needed to change and since I have done it's done me a few fish. One of the beauties about this lake is you've no idea what's going to be on the end and there was a fish caught the other day by one of the lads called Gareth that hadn't been out for four years and I'm not sure when this one was last caught. I've done all this called and it's 
proper exciting fishing somewhere like this. Lovely. What are you shaking at, Bo? I think I know. Anything that moves, she wants to eat it. Which is why I've got to tie her up. One of the lads had a 30 pounder last night and, oh, I just couldn't control her. I had to tie her up again. God. What are you shaking at? Huh? What are you shaking at? You wouldn't think it by looking at her, but she's a proper killer. Anything that moves, she wants it. A rat a rabbit, a sheep, anything. And I don't think she's seen many carp in her life. So she'll have those as well. <laughs> it's funny with dogs because uh, I was talking to one of the other syndicate members earlier, Gareth, who's also got a dog. And he also has to tie her up whenever he's fishing with her because she just runs ragged all the time. Now, Bo's not too bad, but when I get a fish on the bank, she just seems to go absolutely mental and uh, Gareth was telling me that one night he had to tie his dog up that much because she was just running all over the place that he was lying on his bed chair she was tied to the bed chair and she jumped over the top of him and obviously the cord's gone over the top of him she's come underneath the bed chair jumped up back on top of him and he's almost like stuck in the bed chair he's got a bite and he can't get out because he's almost strapped to the bed chair so uh, you know he's it's funny the things that happen to you when you're on the bank, but uh, you know I've, I've not had that problem yet. I'm probably going to get it with her because she can be a bit of a nightmare. But I do remember many years ago using one of those old Dock and Army German sleeping bags. Some of the guys that have been around in the 90s will remember these. Used to buy them off the Army and Navy store, and he used to strap it to the bed chair and then zip yourself in it. And got a bite one night, and I'm trying to get out of this sleeping bag. I couldn't get out of it, and they ended up shuffling to the rods with the sleeping bag and the bed chair strapped to me back so uh, the things that happen when you get a bite it's proper crazy but uh, we've not yet been strapped to the bed chair by you but uh, you never know it might happen one day eh? <laughs> Don't you be eating it. It is a good one. For 30. Your first 30 pounder. You haven't seen him in it. Yeah, you okay. Alright. Let me get into the bank. Yeah, that's right. I grew up as a young lad wanting to catch a Yankee 30 pounder. And there's my first. And that is a brilliant way. In this one's block. Fantastic. Maybe next one, I'll have one bigger than this. Ooh. 
dream. 